Is there any hope for the Fallout franchise under Bethesda's leadership? Let's find out. Over the past few years, I've broken down basically every single Todd Howard interview, but I think this interview between Todd Howard and Mr. Matty plays may be the single best Todd Howard interview out there right now, because you see why it's important to never say bad things about companies or Todd Howard? Because if you do, you do not get to interview Todd Howard. In this one, we're getting insightful questions that Todd Howard will actually answer. We just learned a ton more about the future of Fallout, Starfield, and The Elder Scrolls. The full interview is, of course, on Maddie's channel, but here I'll be highlighting some of the big things as well as sharing my own thoughts and interpretations on them. Todd Howard gets into the future of Fallout and what we could realistically expect around that, but also some surprising updates on Starfield. This game is going to be... Now, before we start, I have to say, I believe absolutely nothing Todd Howard says, because the reality is... All of the decision-making power is in Microsoft, in Xbox. Todd Howard does not choose anything. I think Todd Howard was not for the creation of the Fallout TV series, but then came in Microsoft, bought them up and uh, said, Hey, Todd, if you want to keep your paycheck, we're making a series, my dude. And Todd Howard was, man, I really like my paycheck. I guess we're making that series. Be far more active than I think many of us were expecting. And also, it was Microsoft who made Bethesda not release Starfield a year plus something early. They explicitly forced them to fix bugs. And the state that Starfield released in was atrocious. Still better than 76, but still very atrocious. And Microsoft was responsible for, well, us not getting a peep of 76, honestly, at this point. Which is honestly kind of good. So, I put absolutely no stock in Bethesda even being remotely competent when making, well, honestly, any game. Not just a Fallout franchise. They have already inevitably proved that they are completely incapable of handling Fallout, Elder Scrolls, or any other thing that they should be able to handle. But Microsoft, Microsoft has a chance at actually not mucking up. And we even get some initial details on the Elder Scrolls 6. If you're an Elder Scrolls fan, I honestly think this interview is kind of like Christmas morning in a lot of ways. So please, give the full interview a watch, I cover the big stuff, but Maddie gets into a ton more detail, and frankly, anytime a creator is interviewing an exec, that's gonna be a win for all of us. But kicking things- People told me, hey, there's a Maddie interview with Todd Howard, are you gonna react? That thing is one hour long. I don't wanna watch one hour of Maddie filleting, uh, you know, absolutely just fondling. Todd Howard. No, no, thank you. Things off, we get to hear about the future of Fallout from the perspective of Todd Howard. Todd Howard agrees with the sentiment that Fallout has never been more popular than it is right now. Most people will then- That's just the TV series. The TV series was absolutely an unexpected success for them. But Fallout itself is not that popular, sadly. They did an 80 and 70 percent discount on everything because they are desperate to get new people in. There's no other reason you do that. It's the same reason why Diablo 4 went on Steam and then was like on discount five times at this point. Because they are desperate to get in a new audience. Because the old audience has pretty much abandoned it. That is the situation that we are in reality currently dealing with. Same thing with Star Wars, same thing with a lot of other things, honestly. And Fallout is absolutely no different. And, well, I will say that, you know, the Fallout TV show was a 5 out of 10, an aggressive 5 out of 10. There were some moments that were really good, mostly involving the ghoul and Lucy, but, you know, there were also moments that completely, absolutely just ruined everything that we saw there. So it's an aggressive 5 out of 10. The only thing I am looking forward, though, is the Fallout TV show Season 2. Because while it's a 5 out of 10, it's watchable at least. And nowadays, I mean, a watchable kind of actually sadly means a lot. We're not looking for good, we're looking for watchable. House of the Dragon is out also, you know, bad boys, but you know. Then immediately jump to, okay, well why aren't we getting new games then? But Todd Howard has a bit of a different perspective on Fallout. He describes how Bethesda has never really stopped working on Fallout. They have Fallout 76, which has been getting consistent updates over the past five and a half but it's on a skeleton crew and we know that which is not saying a lot 
years. So many fans are sitting here like, well, we desperately need a new Fallout game. From Bethesda's perspective, or at least Todd Howard, there is a Fallout game out there that is getting a steady flow of content. And contrary to some of the other headlines or even Disgusting. just fan sentiment as of late, Todd Howard doesn't think the next Fallout game should be rushed. You know, we don't feel like we need to rush any of that. You know, yeah. right now, the... Well, sadly, Todd Howard also doesn't feel that he needs to make good games. Fallout TV show fills a certain niche in terms of the franchise and storytelling. Totally get the desire uh, for a new kind of mainline single player game. Mm -hmm. And look, those things take time. I don't, I don't think it's bad for people to miss things, right? Uh, as well. So we just okay. Say nothing more, Todd. Please I want to get it right and make sure that everything we're doing in a franchise, whether it's Elder Scrolls or Fallout or now Starfield, that those become you know, meaningful moments for everybody who love these franchises as much as we do. And right off the bat, I think we're starting to see an interesting dichotomy currently happening at Bethesda. We just recently heard from Jez Corden that Microsoft wants the next Fallout game out sooner, potentially even worse. Yeah, and it's gonna happen. Working with other devs who aren't named Bethesda to make that a reality. But can Thank God. Firstly, in this interview, and even so- Again, I have lost all faith in Bethesda. There is literally nothing you can tell me that is going to get me excited about anything Bethesda does. And keep in mind, the only exception is the Fallout TV show, and that's not done by Bethesda. That's done by Prime. And most likely, Todd Howard can't even tell them what to do there at all. Because again, Daddy Microsoft kind of spitting on Bethesda, thankfully. So, anything that gets announced, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, or whatever, as long as it's done by anyone else than Bethesda, I could be excited. But as long as you're going to tell me Bethesda's working on something, I'm like, ah, oh, thank you, I'll, I, I think I'll fucking pass. In past, we hear Todd Howard mention how he doesn't want to rush things around Fallout. And I think we are at this point where a disconnect is occurring. From these recent Microsoft rumors, it really sounds like someone else is getting to do a Fallout remaster or a spinoff or something. While Todd Howard is perfectly fine taking his time with the Elder Scrolls 6 and then eventually working on Fallout 5 if that's what they want to do next. And his core goal is to make sure those games are great as opposed to increasing their bottom line, which is obviously going to be a far larger focus for Microsoft right now. And this just makes sense to me. ZeniMax has just sold to Microsoft a few years ago. You have to imagine to go along with that, there's a bit of a sigh of relief, like, okay, we don't have to stress about the bottom line nearly as much anymore. We'll have a bit more creative freedom. So I think we will likely see more Fallout, but it probably won't be from Bethesda Game Studios directly, and instead but developed by someone else. Fallout 76 specifically- That gets me excited instantaneously. That gets me excited has never been more popular than it is right now. This thanks largely to the TV show. But Todd Howard just- We already talked about this. Fallout 76, the, uh, the show pushed its numbers up and then it dropped exactly where it was, 5k players, which is sad uh, for a Bethesda game at least. In general, it's kind of good overall considering the state of the world and whatnot, but it is extremely low for a Bethesda game, which means it's bad. Because people play things that are good and don't play things that are bad. I know, shocking, but that's just the way things work. Describes here how Bethesda Game Studios has an internal roadmap for what they're going to be doing next with Fallout 76. And we do get one of those big questions that many in the Fallout community have been asking around this game. Have they considered charging for Fallout 76 DLC? As of right now, every single DLC for this game is a free update, supported by microtransactions and- I would not call any of this actually DLC. They did a rework of the game where they added NPCs. They, they they did like a smaller thing where they added the Brotherhood of Steel because, I mean, obviously, Brotherhood of Steel as always. Uh, then they added some half-baked garbage, American Playground, the Pit, all of these things that are, no one gives a shit, honestly, they're overall bad. And now there's, it's their official first DLC, arguably, Skyline Valley. Which has a cool looking boss, and yeah, that's kind of it. The boss does look cool. The boss actually does look like, you know, uh, not outdated graphics, so magically how, and it's, and it's, and it looks cool. That's, that's it. That's the only thing I can say good about Skyline Valley.
and the season pass. But many fans who love Fallout 76 want more content. They're like, hey, I'll take out my wallet and pay for good content if you add it, which is the exact model that ESO uses. But here, Todd Howard describes how they want everyone to play all of the content and how it's a pretty unique experience. You know what's the difference between ESO and Fallout 76 fans? Fallout 76 fans are just dumb in the head. ESO fans? They really are admitting that, oh yeah, everything is way too expensive and the game's kind of going in the wrong direction, and a lot of the things that they have added are complete garbage and not even fun. But we just like uh, Elder Scrolls in general, so that's why we play it. And that is a complete fine answer. You can enjoy bad games, you can enjoy bad movies, you can enjoy a lot of bad things, but... As long as you try to defend the slop that you are eating as absolutely great like 76 fans, that's just disgusting. Like, grow a spine. Experience with everyone flocking to new content together because they can all do that. It's free. So Todd Howard basically confirms that no, Fallout 76 will not be getting paid DLC in the future. But then we get another phenomenal question from Maddie where he asks about the dynamic between Fallout 76 and a potential new Fallout game on the way. Many members of the community have had this concern that a new Fallout game won't happen anytime soon since it'll step on or even cannibalize the sales of Fallout 76. It's look, that's a really good question. There's nothing to cannibalize, so who gives a shit? And when you're sort of starting those things, but we have that fear as well. Is one game going to cannibalize another? I think mm -hmm. the good news is as long as like the initial releases are spread out a little bit, they don't. They both mm -hmm. find their audiences, right? Like Skyrim is still one of our most played games, while Elder Scrolls Online is celebrating their 10th anniversary and doing really well. We've noticed yeah. even when we update those games, they don't really cannibalize each other. And then you see it with Fallout 4 kind of, hitting number one on the charts, and then sure. 76 right behind it. And so, I mean, logic would say there's a little bit of cannibalization between the two, but mm -hmm. much, much less in practice than, than we thought between these games. So when there's another Fallout, we'll call it classically single-player game, mm -hmm. um, my expectation is 76 is just as healthy as it is today. And I think this response is actually a pretty big deal. I, I agree. People who are playing 76 and actually enjoying it, uh, they are seeking completely different things than uh, your standard Fallout experience. I think a decent chunk of the community just kind of had this notion that a new Fallout game could end support for Fallout 76. Like whenever Fallout 5 comes out, Fallout 76 will kind of just go away. But Todd Howard seems quite explicit in saying that this isn't the case. From Bethesda's perspective, Fallout 76 will continue to live on side by side with a new single player release. And this too makes sense. Bethesda Game Studios Austin is a bit of a unique studio compared to the rest of the company. That's the main studio supporting Fallout 76, and as such, they have a far larger focus on a multiplayer. And this does suggest that we could have an absolutely insane year for Fallout. Fallout 76 is more popular than ever. It's gaining more support as a result of the TV show, and we'll likely get bigger DLCs going forward. But we also are hearing how Microsoft wants a new Fallout game, so we could get a new Fallout game as well as bigger updates for Fallout 76 all at the same time. But we also get that question on remasters, as Manny does ask, is there a plan to modernize the original two Fallout games? A main priority. My guess would be no, but Todd Howard's not going to say no. He never says no, he leaves it vague. So the Todd Howard flowchart is if he says an explicit yes, that's maybe happening. If he does, does anything else but say an explicit yes, it's probably never happening. Priority for us is to make sure they're available and you can still play them. So, in the P so the answer is no. PC, obviously, they're there for people to go and get and play. Um, and making sure that, you know, they run okay. As far as sort of beyond that, we've talked about it, but, you know, our priorities in terms of, hey, let's go do dev work and, and make certain things work, um, they, haven't, they haven't been in those areas. So sure. we, wanted, we wanted to load up and run well. The rest of it, like I could argue, I think some of the charm of games, you know, from that area and the original fallouts is a little bit of that age. I would never want to sort of, you know, paste over some of that with, um, well, we changed how this works, so it's it's more modern. Again, so as long that. as you can download it, as long as it loads up and runs, mm -hmm. um, I think I'd like people to experience it the way it was. This is a response we've heard several- Told you. Told you. It's an obvious no. Todd Howard hates Fallout 1. Todd Howard hates Fallout 2. Todd Howard hates Fallout New Vegas. 
multiple times from Todd Howard now. It's very obvious because New Vegas is the most critically and uh, most loved Fallout franchise that there is, and no one talks badly about it, and Todd Howard didn't make it. He specifically seems to just really like games in their original form, not some kind of modern overhaul or remake. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure how to interpret this one. On one hand, it So why is Fallout 3 getting a remake in that case? definitely seems to suggest that a Fallout 1 or 2 remake is out of the cards in the near future, but let's not forget this is a Microsoft IP now. The second they feel like it makes financial sense to start remaking older Fallouts, they'll probably start doing that. And even further, yep. like I mentioned, Todd Howard has been saying this for years. Dude, people have such a hard time understanding Todd Howard has no power in Bethesda any, any longer. The, Microsoft is just keeping him around as the figurehead because Todd Howard is synonymous with Bethesda at the end of the day that's absolutely true so they keep uh, keep him around for optics and that's pretty much it but todd howard has no say it's all daddy microsoft now and thank god now if you go back to e3 2018 and 2019 you can find similar quotes around remaster typically if microsoft buys something i instantaneously just kind of write it off but this is this is that one exception in life that i'm like hell yeah microsoft did something good they bought bethesda but we saw how in 2020, Bethesda had plans to remaster Oblivion and Fallout 3, according to this internal roadmap. So just because the two worst choices ever, as expected from Bethesda. Because Todd Howard is saying he's not a huge fan of remasters doesn't mean that we aren't getting them. If anything, it feels like over the last year, Xbox and Microsoft have been exerting more influence on some of these studios. Which makes me think remasters could definitely be in the cards, or hey, maybe all of this just ended up cancelled in favor of a spin-off game. But I think overall, we got a pretty interesting outlook on Fallout as a franchise from Todd Howard here. Because all of these answers effectively boil down to, yeah, you have Fault 76, a ton of people are playing that right now, so why are we going to do anything else? By the way, the Skyline Valley expansion released very recently and let me check the steam charts Fallout 76 steam charts let's check how it's doing already okay so yeah we can we can see it got released and well instantaneously it's it, it's it effectively started leaking players in the, the second day and now it's just steadily leaking 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 already a third of the new uh already a third of the uh, player base has already given up on fallout 76 the new expansion again it's a failure we'll take our time and we'll make fallout 5 one day and we'll make sure it's a good game obviously but it doesn't matter because people playing this are probably buying all the microtransactions of it that is the reason the only people you see in this game i'm in front so see that yeah, getting level 200 is not actually like a matter of five minutes, okay? That takes literal hours. Getting a level 500, it takes multiple days. These are the people left playing the game. There is only the absolutely most dedicated slop enjoyers out there. Many Fallout fans want something new sooner than that, because Fallout 5 might be coming in the mid-2030s at this point, but I still have the suspicion that Microsoft might be playing a larger role behind the scenes as Fallout spin-offs might be starting production right now. But we do get some major updates on Bethesda's strategy going forward, because it seems like they're going to have a major strategy shift. And to me, what actually ends up becoming one of the most telling aspects of this what? interview overall is around Bethesda's evolving support plans for their games. That expectation that we'll update them for years is is true. Mm -hmm. We would look back at Skyrim, which we're still updating. Right. To a is that bullshit? I, I, it sounds like that's bullshit. Small extent, and there's all of the creations and mods there. Still a hugely played game. Same with Fallout 4, that we wish we had supported them longer. Mm. Right. And we're still doing work there. So, and that's the trick. Like, as we sit here right now, our games have never been more popular we have last month 25 million players in our games and so wow. the trick for that's such cope they're probably looking at numbers where people are just have the game installed or something that is such cope world of warcraft couldn't tell you the most popular game in the fucking world does not have numbers like this okay that does well actually that could potentially have 40 million uh, uh, players that log in uh you know at least once every month 
But but that is to say, oh, we have almost 13 mil. That is that is such co. That is such a inflation of numbers through some kind of dumb and dumbass means. I do not buy that text even for a split second. It's a it's just like a staggering amount of people. Yeah. And players that we hear from where our 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 number one job always is like how are we serving that audience on a month to month basis uh, so we're taking care of them while also developing, you know, new products. This has been something that's been popping up in a bunch of Todd Howard interviews and really just Bethesda interviews in general. They keep mentioning how people are playing their game. Okay, so l let me give you the context here. Fallout 76 has an average of like 5k people playing it on b before this. We're, we're gonna count the average steady numbers. Hell, let's say 7k. Then let's take Starfield. Let's also say, by the way, 7k. Let's take Skyrim. Let's say that's like 15k. Let's take uh, Fallout 4 and say that's like, again, 7k or something like that. So you have an average day uh, player base per day on all the Bethesda things. Let's say roughly 50k. World of Warcraft completely eclipses that per day. And again, they boast, uh, they don't even boast numbers like this. Okay? Bro of Warcraft eclipses these numbers, and they don't even claim, uh, you know, they would be fearful of claiming that they have this. Last time we checked, it could be like, you know, 40 to 70 million average, uh, average users per month or something like that when it comes to Bro of Warcraft. Potentially highest number. And their numbers are so much larger per day than Bethesda's. But Bethesda is somehow magically claiming, oh yeah, we, our numbers aren't even remotely close to that, but we got like almost 30 million daily users. That's such bull. ...games for longer than ever. And we constantly heard with Starfield how they want to support Starfield for longer into the future. But now we're starting to actually hear concrete details on how they plan to do that. And this all is a trend I think most of us are noticing. But this is not only updating their games more frequently, but building out systems to bring a steady flow of content to their games. I love this shilling. Hey, here's $7 for a single 20 minute mission. Steady content. Oh God for the foreseeable future. And Todd Howard does go on to confirm here that the same idea of games with longer tales and support will continue with the Elder Scroll 6, as we are starting to see this evolution into Bethesda games. By the way, this is true because it's just free money. Adding mod support to every game is just free money. So Bethesda is gonna do that. It's almost as game- Is it actually supporting the game? No, no, it's bullshit. But you know, at least he can technically claim it. Games as a service with far more updates and DLC following the release. And as we get into some of the Starfield talk, we hear even more around how Bethesda is evolving in this direction. The cadence between updates on Starfield moving forward will vary. Right now, the target is once every six weeks for updates, but some larger gaps may come and perhaps even some smaller gaps depending on what they're currently working on. But right now, Bethesda is working on their Starfield year two plans, and that may mean the six week update cadence they're targeting right now goes away. And and just right off the bat, this is a pretty major revelation. I think many of us kind of thought that Bethesda Game Studios would make the Shattered Space expansion because everyone bought that with the premium edition, but then move on to the Elder Scrolls 6 and that'd kind of be where Starfield is left with paid- People who thought that are stupid. This is the uh, this is the day and age of we make a thing and we add a steady trickle of content forever because that's just the easiest way to get money. Obviously, this is going to be done mod supporting it for years to come. But no, that couldn't be farther from reality as Starfield is going to be getting a ton of support. As Todd Howard shares quite a bit more about Starfield. Okay, I, I, I just can't. This is such incredible shilling from Juice right now. It is just insanity, okay? What do you mean support? Starfield came out as a buggy mess. It took literally six months to add a goddamn eat button. It took, it took a year to add a goddamn map to this game okay and now that we have a map everyone sees wow wow there's literally nothing in this loading screen simulator if a person has not mastered the quick travel best ways a person going from a planet to a planet needs to go through five cutscenes and a 15 second animation of sitting in a goddamn chair okay every update 
but Starfield that has been done has been a bug fix. And most studios would not even put that out as a, a, a big patch. Oh my god, but there's the fix 20 bugs. Yeah, from those 20 bugs, they didn't fix actually 50, and I'm not even joking. We don't even know if the bug fixes for the stuff they claim are true, because people end up reporting the same bug again. They tried to fix an asteroid bug that constantly followed your spaceship literally three goddamn times. Most other companies would call these things minor bug fixes and it would be just like a minor patch note thing, but Bethesda is like, oh my god, we fixed 20 bugs! We're heroes! It's, it's, it's pathetic. Builds first and future expansions. And I don't think people realize is that Shattered Space, the bulk of that expansion pack, pretty much, you know, once you get to the city and the planet, um, it takes place there. That's going to be one of my it questions. It allows us to build a, a landscape like we would traditionally do and have the city and the quest. And so that story takes place there and the landscape's kind of... So this does sound exciting, but wait, I'll ruin it for you, okay? This this does sound... Oh my God, is there a chance? So first of all, how many locations are there going to be? If there were a lot of locations, Todd Howard is smart enough of a person to actually know, hey, wait, if we have like 10 unique locations there for the story and whatnot, I should probably say that. But the fact that he's not saying it means that Shattered Space is like literally three or four handcrafted locations. And when he says handcrafted, I honestly don't even believe that. They're probably semi-RNG generated anyway. And it's probably not even that interesting. That would be my assumption. Plus, the star, uh, Shattered Space story is made by the same idiot who made the original story, and the writing for Starfield is absolutely comically atrocious. From joining space pirates and not being able to kill the guy who literally threatens your life in front of everyone after he gets kicked out and you get into the space pirates, from, from the possibility of either blowing up a ship of people who left Earth before, uh, you know, the uh, super fast drives were created, and not being able to take out even the comically evil people who want to enslave them as servitors for forever. It's like, you now, Starfield's story is comically autistic. And the same people uh, making it are now made in King Shattered Space. You know, content-wise, we're looking at kind of like what we do with Far Harbor on mm. Fallout 4. We're like, okay, language. this is a scope that works for, you know, our development in doing this kind of annual story expansion type of thing. So um, really excited about that. And it lets us, you know, kind of do some things um, the way we would in, in previous games and give people not completely that experience because it's still Starfield. Sure. Um, but, you know, this new kind of alien world that you're able to explore and it's it takes place there so this was a huge God. response perhaps the biggest answer in this interview overall first off shattered space taking place on just one planet is massive todd howard comparing it to far harbor is to reflect everything just kind of being its own thing we'll travel to a totally new planet experience a completely unique culture and meet by the way you can see it in the trailer what i actually mean by this look at this what do you see here well there's obviously this location that's this location. And what do you see around? Uh, nothing. Fucking nothing. Yet again, nothing. Have fun. The unique culture and meet a bunch of new characters along the way. And the fact that it's all just there on one planet with a major city and it's no longer going to be fast traveling around the galaxy with tons of load screens could make this DLC a massive hit with a ton of players. Those load screens were one of the principal complaints around Starfield for most people who otherwise enjoyed the game. And it does seem like Bethesda slash Todd Howard are recognizing that feedback, as he does mention during this, that it allows people to play things more similarly to past games, which is one of the biggest complaints around Starfield and its travel system. But build That's good, because you need to understand the loading uh, sc a screen issue. It's not the fact that loading screens exist, it's the fact that in Starfield, you literally get five loading screens in a row. Building off what was said earlier with Bethesda games having longer tails moving forward, Todd Howard confirms here that Shared Space is just the first annual expansion for Starfield, and more will be coming in the future. They're already I planning the wait. next one, and Todd Howard goes on to say- Again, there's literally no shot that this succeeds. I, I feel so confident riding off Shattered Space as a failure. I, 
I feel so confident in doing this. There is no way they learned that lesson. Again, the person who made Starfield's lore literally went on Twitter and told everyone how stupid they are because they don't understand the genius of his goddamn writing. Today, he hopes these annual expansions continue for years to come. A Far Harbor sized expansion each year for the next few years is massive. And taking this together with his comments earlier, you have to imagine this will also be a thing for the Elder Scrolls 6, or at least is loosely planned to be that way for that game. It seems like Bethesda is taking an almost Ubisoft esque approach to maintaining their games for years after release. With made. Yeah, that doesn't sound your pieces of DLC coming out as opposed to just one or two around release and then moving on. And personally, I love this. I've actually mentioned it in several past videos that I hoped Bethesda would do exactly this. Because I think Bethesda games specifically really lend themselves to be expanded this way on a somewhat regular basis. Many of these expansions are often contained stories in new locations. They don't impact the previous content all that much. But this does really feel like one of the biggest shifts we'll be seeing with this company moving forward. As this does mean we'll be seeing a lot more content from Bethesda on a regular basis. If you're an Elder Scrolls fan right now, I would be creaming. Assuming this model is a success for Starfield, we could see the Elder Scrolls 6 drop in 2026, then imagine every year until 2030 another deal sized expansion drops giving you a solid dozen or well that is to be expected for elder scrolls it's their biggest thing two more hours of content this feels like a win 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 bethesda fans desperately want more content for their favorite ips and now bethesda can provide that to their audience on a regular basis plus honestly thus far bethesda expansions have really been some of their best work over the past decade but even beyond that we hear a bit more about the elder scroll 6 and how some of the changes from starfield will carry over as todd howard does confirm lots of the tech used in starfield will continue to be used in the elder scroll 6 and even expanded on mm. and yeah, this is unironically one of the reasons why after Starfield came out, you need to uh, you need to remember, you need to understand, people lost hope for Elder Scrolls Six because it's the same people making it, it's the same goddamn engine, it's the same writers, it's the same everything. And you know, a lot of the Starfield technology is the starting point um, for Elder Scrolls Six, and then nice. obviously we try to do another jump up in technology with looking at you know, what's coming in the future, how do we do that, and always be moving the ball forward. For a long time, people have been speculating that the ship system could be repurposed into a ship system, aka boats, for the Elder Scrolls 6. But with another phenomenal- What? Question, we also hear Maddie ask if a spin-off Elder Scrolls game could happen. Does anyone else get to work- yeah, obviously that could happen. ...work on Elder Scrolls outside of Bethesda. Todd Howard describes how they're protective Hopefully. of all of their franchises, and he doesn't think spin-off Elder Scrolls games are really what people want. There are a lot of things we look- Well, thankfully Todd Howard doesn't fucking understand anything about, about you know, any franchise that they currently have. ...get with Elder Scrolls. You know, you mentioned an immersive Dark Brotherhood sim. I'm not suggesting... I, I, imagine saying, hey, there's this really, uh, really old franchise that has millions of fans of it, and even though they're botching it up, it's still actually making money because, again, it's just such a massive franchise, and you're like, oh, no, 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 people don't want more of this franchise. Just, of course people don't want anything new. How stupid is that? Suggesting that wouldn't be a bad game, but I don't view that as filling some whole mm -hmm. i mean pretty like i think what people want out of elder scrolls is a mainline game like skyrim like oblivion let me know in the comments do you you see what i mean if you have played elder scrolls any of them <laughs> you know that's bullshit how many people finish the storyline in these games no one almost no one it's actually most people just trail off doing something else at random. People don't finish the stories for this. I haven't. I don't. I don't. I have not actually finished Fallout 3's campaign a single time. I have finished New Vegas multiple times, but three I just haven't. I just trail off doing something else, and I can't ca actually care. Okay. So you see how absolutely wrong Todd Howard is on everything. You agree with that one? Matty brings up some of the recent pushback on pricing when it comes to Starfield creations. There's a $10 ship module and a $7 quest, and a lot of people are frustrated about that. We've Obviously. actually seen the review scores drop even lower as a result. And specifically- Paid mods are here to stay. There's nothing even to talk about here. People are still gonna buy this. If people don't buy this, well, you know, whatever. Paid mods are here to stay. 
the, this discussion is completely pointless. It doesn't matter what you say, what you do, but that's keeping it. We'll try to claim. But what I think was genuinely one of the most important answers from Todd Howard here, he is asked about some of the negative receptions and narratives around the Fallout TV show. And specifically, Bethesda not liking New Vegas, as that narrative popped up around some of the choices they made. Well, everyone knows Todd Howard hates New Vegas. Todd Howard's uh, Magnus Opus was Fallout 3, his absolute baby. And then comes Fallout New Vegas that absolutely blows it out of the water and it's not even made by the Bethesda. Imagine, Bethesda's best game is not made by Bethesda. The most critically acclaimed, the most loved franchise in the goddamn series, and it's not made by Bethesda made with the plot of the TV show. But Todd Howard's response, I think, really applies to anyone creating something on the internet and just putting it out there for others to consume. You know, look, the stuff that we do, you reach a level of popularity and a hype, and you just have to understand, like, for us, I know a lot of that comes with it, mm -hmm. okay? And you do grow a pretty- I don't understand what he said. Pretty thick skin. If you really want to do this, you have to grow a thick skin in... Well, Todd Howard is an expert on that. Keep in mind, Todd Howard is literally a goddamn man look. Accepting the criticism. Um, that's what makes us better. And these franchises and the time that people spend in the games, they're really, really important to them. And that's also a not answer for, hey, do you hate New Vegas? Huh, who cares, honestly, at this point? Anyway... That, that was Juice, running cover for Bethesda, like an absolute professional. It is what it is. Maybe he's going to get a Todd Howard interview soon. Who knows? Anyway, that was this was me, Quizzer Sensei. Bye!